By now, you've likely heard the fantastic news that came out on Tuesday. But just in case you didn't, there was a Canadian court ruling in which a judge ruled that Canada's use of emergency powers to end truckers' protests was unconstitutional. Sadly, this is something that fell on deaf ears both by politicians of all stripes and as well ordinary Canadians that were supportive of the draconian vaccine mandates and further triggered by the truckers' convoy back in 2022. The ruling was a legal beatdown of Prime Minister Trudeau by Justice Richard Mosley, as he ruled that the actions of the Trudeau regime were illegal and unreasonable when it came to the use of the Emergencies Act against the Canadian truckers in February of 2022. Coming as no surprise, though, Justin's motley crew has vowed to appeal the ruling. After all, he can't have his legacy tarnished. His love of Canadians, it just never ends, right? Legacy? Love of Canadians? Yeah, I guess he didn't hear the chants of ordinary Canadians at a recent MMA event in Toronto. They were praising his leadership with words that rhyme with truck. Hmm. In his excellent decision, Justice Mosley wrote that the Trudeau's government, Trudeau government's use of the Federal Emergencies Act does not bear the hallmarks of reasonableness, justification, transparency, and intelligibility, and was not justified in relation to the relevant factual and legal constraints that were required to be taken into consideration. For that matter, the same could be said about all his years as Prime Minister. No, the Justice also concluded Trudeau's use of emergency powers infringed on several constitutional provisions. Finally, folks, a judge who's a true constitutionalist and is looking at what the Constitution actually says and basing his ruling on the correct interpretation of it, not some fanciful woke nonsense that he or she pulled out of their ass. The words and phrases of the Constitution Act mean something and must be used to distill any judgment involving the Constitution specific to the case. The part of the Constitution called the Charter of Rights and Freedoms is very applicable. To date, this has not been the case in terms of earlier court decisions, as stated by Brian Peckford, the only living minister still alive today who is a signatory. One need not get into the tests in Section 1 that were violated since before even applying these, the intent and overall context has not been followed, resulting in violations of the Charter, according to Brian Peckford. Judge Mosley says, It requires that the words of the Act are to be read in their entire context and in their grammatical and ordinary sense harmoniously with the scheme of the Act the object of the act, and the intention of parliament. That's right, folks. Don't interpret it in some other way, but look at the context that's being presented. Something previous justices weighing in on this dark period of Canadian history either willingly or unwillingly failed to do so. The Canadian Civil Liberties Association, one of the plaintiffs who challenged the Prime Minister's use of emergency powers, argued the government unnecessarily shredded people's constitutional rights for what was essentially a one-city policing issue in Ottawa. Yes, how dare the elites in Ottawa get perturbed, including bulldozing long-protected rights like, for example, freezing protesters' bank accounts and seizing their other assets. They do that in China, I believe, right, Justin? It's taken quite some time, but finally, we may see those that wantonly deprived Canadians of their guaranteed rights to be held to account for exercising the nuclear option of the Emergency Powers Act. Given all we live in, the 24-7 news cycle, folks, these days, and that corporate media likes to memory hole everything, let's not forget the truckers who stood proud and strong in late January and February of 2022. It was their selfless and heroic defiance against a tyrannical regime that arguably single-handedly turned the tide, not only in Canada, but dare I say worldwide, against mandates and against lockdowns. 
The only thing that could have made this decision better is if it had come out two years ago, but better late than never. This decision not only vindicates them, but should silence and shame all those sycophants who sided with Trudeau and his band of merry bandits. It should also feed the growing anti-Trudeau sentiment in Canada that is being clearly reflected in most polls. For many Canadians, the COVID days are just a horrible memory and something they would rather forget. Hopefully soon, the same will be said of Trudeau as well. Anyway, I do appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. Please post any comments you have in the comment section. You can always follow me on my Rumble on my Locals account. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channels, please do so. Get on board. And I'm also on Twitter at Camera612. I don't really kind of engage in all the back and forth. I just pretty much post the videos and stuff in time. Maybe I will start engaging a bit more there as well. And I will see you next time.